I'd like to welcome Mr. Amitabh Kant. Uh, Mr. Kant is the CEO of the Niti Aayog, which is India's main uh, policy organization and uh, looks at all the issues that cut across different uh, parts of the government. Uh, Mr. Kant, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation today. Uh, you know, this is part of Climate Week, which you know is organized by the Climate Group every year in New York. Uh, so, it, uh, so it's it's really important for you to uh, represent India in this conversation and. Uh, I'll put a couple of questions to you and it'll be great to hear your uh, feedback. Uh, sure. Of course, climate change continues to be an important issue. Um, uh, you know, obviously, even in light of COVID and so on, um, we've seen carbon emissions go down, but that is obviously only a temporary respite, uh, most likely. Uh, what do you think are the main steps that or the main priorities for a country like India with regard to dealing with climate change issues, uh, perhaps over the next uh, 10 years? What do you think are the main steps that a country like India can take uh, that can actually help in, in dealing with climate change issues going forward? Let me first thank the climate group for their leadership in promoting climate mitigation via this climate week. And I'm truly delighted to discuss this important topic of climate change with you, Suman. Uh, specifically to your question, uh, when the COVID-19 crisis dawned upon us, the advocates of uh, sustainability were very worried that the global sustainability movement would lose steam uh, in the scramble towards recovering the economy, uh, you know, especially in the context of emerging economies. But India's commitment to sustainability truly proves that growth and sustainability uh, can go hand in hand. Climate change is real and has far-reaching impacts for which the world is not prepared. Combating global warming and the resultant climate change and poverty are two most important goals for the world in this decade. And uh, this is really uh, designated as the climate decade. Energy is the largest contributor to emissions, 70% in the case of India. And as a result of very intensive and innovative policy design, India is well on its way to meet or even exceed the reduction of GDP emission intensity target by 33 to 35 percent, which India had committed to by 2030. Uh, you know, even in electricity, transport and industry, which are the largest energy consumers in India, uh, our focus and sensitivity has been on carbon intensity of products sold across the world. Uh, we're focusing on low carbon industrialization, and that's a huge opportunity for India. Uh, our transport sector has the potential to save 1.7 gigatons of cumulative carbon dioxide emissions. And therefore, we've really pushed for the shared connected and electric mobility and connected passenger mobility and cost-effective, clean, and optimized freight transport. So these are really, uh, this is really what we are pushing for. Uh, we are pushing for an efficient and open market for renewable energy technologies to flourish, and we are truly committed towards uh, our commitments. Great, thank you so much for that. Uh, you know, earlier in, uh, in earlier years, uh, in some ways, the whole issue of climate change was... Uh, um, in some ways set off against the issue of development. Now, the good news is that technologies have got to a point both on the mobility side as well as on the renewable energy side where it's no longer a trade-off. And there are, a, you know, the emergence of a lot of new technologies. How is India thinking of positioning itself in taking the lead on some of these new technology areas such that it can actually drive, um, you know, growth in this area going forward and actually convert this whole thing into a, a really strong business opportunity? And, and take the lead vis-a-vis -vis other developing countries? Uh, so, uh, Suman, my belief is that uh, the technology will be the biggest disruptor across solar, across wind, across storage, across mobility, all these areas will see huge and massive amount of technological disruption. Uh, the renewable energy in combination with energy storage has already reached grid parity uh, with coal power in India. And this is actually a testament to India's policy design and the spirit of uh, Indian entrepreneurs like you. Uh, India's renewable industry is a unique story led by spirited entrepreneurs. 
and now with large public sector enterprises joining the bandwagon the future looks bright uh, i can also say that much can be inferred from the recent events and market signals first the valuation of the global e vehicle giant tesla in august 2020 which reached us dollar 380 billion and became more than the next 12 automakers combined uh, we can well argue that by uh, that there exists some froth in this but the situation gives a clear indication of financial markets firm expectation that evs and batteries really uh, electric vehicles and batteries are the future growth areas while oil will slowly decline and probably die out in the next 2 to 3 decades or even faster uh, second exxon mobil falling of uh, uh, dow jones industrial average after nearly 100 years of being there is a sign that the trend is only accelerating uh, so my view is that india should catalyze grow and fuel the burning ambitions of entrepreneurs in the country to create companies a great companies like you've done and like uh, tesla is doing uh, with clean technologies they might arise out of hydrogen they might arise out of urban air mobility or battery storage and all this will give a huge fillip to the indian growth story in fact many young entrepreneurs have taken the lead in this and the indian corporations which have traditionally shied away from investing in high tech startups uh they should really move into these areas and then uh, they should join hands with venture capital funds to create dedicated pools to develop next generation technologies in india uh the innovative nature of startups combining with the exceptional project execution abilities of industrial houses can bring about a domino effect in climate migration in india for the world and i think that is what has happened young entrepreneurs startups a whole range of uh, path breaking initiatives will be taken by uh, entrepreneurs and industries uh, to bring in new technologies mr kant it's always quite fascinating to listen to listen to you i think you you are very motivational um, and i always feel like getting into the sector yet again and and, and do a few more startups uh, you know even more um, you know of course the role of the government is in the central government and all of this is very critical but equally is so is the role of corporates especially when you look at certain of the hard to abate uh, sectors such as uh, steel and cement also if you look at the whole area of heating which is a very big guzzler uh, actually emitter of carbon emissions as well uh, and also what is very critical is the role of the state governments of india because that is really where a lot of the actual uh, action actually needs to happen how do you think we can get more uh, participation from corporates and from state governments in the soul journey towards climate mitigation in india uh so suman my belief is that this has to be a, a whole of uh, uh you know government approach it has to be the private sector the civil society uh the government all of us and i, I think it is crystal clear to me that uh we should all be focusing on sustainability we should all be focusing on uh, new innovations and uh, you are fully aware that our prime minister's vision for clean energy in this country he scaled up our target from 175 gigawatt uh, in 2022 to 450 gigawatts by 2030 so first of all i would say that we have an ambitious vision which can help generate uh, investor confidence align both the government and the private sector uh at all levels towards a singular target which we are focusing on and many countries can learn from india's tender innovations in renewable energy such as round the clock uh round the clock and hybrid tenders uh just to give you the example indian railway is the largest rail network in the world which functions as a nervous system of national mobility has announced that it will be powered 100% via clean energy by 2030 and this unmatched pioneering ambition from indian railways which is also the eighth largest employer in the world will give a sizable bump to the green a global green job statistics and we are confident of reaching india's non fossil fuel target to 450 gigawatt of renewable energy uh, by 2030 and 
in this all this new technologies new startups established entrepreneurs uh, government departments all will play a critical role in evolving new methodologies of tendering in evolving new technologies and adopting cutting edge technologies and the challenge is to adopt technologies where the world will be 5 years later and therefore how do you commercialize technologies which will take you which will enable you to make a generation leapfrogging that is really the key challenge and we should think of uh, these are cutting edge new technologies and that is what india should be doing i guess one of those cutting edge technologies in which india still has the opportunity to take somewhat of a leadership position is the area of storage and batteries which you talked about earlier and storage of course is essential for the development of the electric vehicle mobility market as well as that in terms of integrating uh, renewable energy into the grid and especially such a large amount of renewable energy forecast to come into the grid in india that becomes very critical i know that you are spearheading the whole effort to try to have uh, uh, battery manufacturing and uh, you know an ecosystem in india as well where have you reached on that and and when do you think we'll actually start seeing battery manufacturing in the country so suman we are at a very advanced stage because of our belief that uh, uh, you know look at the western world america has 950 cars per thousand europe has over 800 cars per thousand in india we just have 20 cars per thousand and therefore uh, we must ensure that we do not make the mistakes of the western world and our evolution must be smooth and therefore if you look at the projections by morgan stanley that by 2040 about half of india's car fleet will be electric vehicle will be the leaders but this will be feasible if we are able to build storage and the challenge for us is to really push for storage in a big way for two wheelers for three wheelers for vehicles uh you know and push storage in a very big way and that's why we we are coming out with a scheme uh for storage where we will support through a production linked incentive scheme uh, establishment of giga factories in india and new technologies and that will really provide a huge impetus we are at a very advanced stage and that will help us to really ensure that we push for storage uh, battery storage and a national mission for transformative mobility and a battery storage has been launched which is housed in this niti aayog and our key uh, uh Uh, approach has been that storage really holds the key to india's future and that's why we have structured this scheme which will enable storage both in mobility and on uh, and for grid purposes for um, and there are cutting edge technologies today which this uh, pli scheme will be able to bring in terrific that's great to hear one last question um the prime minister had of course mooted and has of course we've now established the international solar alliance and along with that there's a vision for the one grid uh, one world uh, uh, one solar uh, what is your sense of uh, in some ways can india really take the lead multilaterally in this area as well to push the world faster towards climate change mitigation activities of course uh, you know we believe we are and we are strong believers that actually uh, you know uh, what uh, organizations like uh, the united nations are doing is really to make uh, a huge difference to the world because uh, we need to work together uh, to to move away from the traditional world and push the demand for you know look at this uh, huge number of steps that needs to be taken a world solar bank is proposed by india hq ed international solar alliance to pool resources from across the globe and use them to fund solar power projects in uh, isa member countries at affordable interest the proposed capital size of the world solar bank would be about 10 billion then we are gearing up the indian mobility towards sustainable modules such as electrification and we need to create leadership in emerging technologies Uh, like hydrogen electrolyzers carbon capture and urban electric aviation and we need consistent policies and leveraging public procurement such as defense as first buyer 
And we need to develop a strong pool of clean technologists across the world to innovate in technology and business model. And also, I think uh, there's this whole challenge of bringing in uh, the most innovative recipients of green financing. How do you take measures like green taxonomy, evolve green bond markets? These are the need of the hour. And this would require all of us across the world, every country of the world, to work together to create a global scale, clean technology manufacturing ecosystem. And this would require, to my mind, a very cooperative partnership effort of countries across the world. And we are confident that uh, the Indian Solar, uh, the International Solar Alliance will enable us to push for this. Thank you so much, Mr. Kant. Always uh, um, ex exciting and a pleasure to listen to you. I think the views, uh, the plans that you spelt out on the part of the Indian government are truly path-breaking, and I'm quite sure that it will help position India in the years to come as a leader in climate change mitigation activities. Uh, terrific to talk to you. Thank you so much for being part of this uh, program. Thank you, Suman. Thank you so much.